<laughs> Real close to range. I got a question for you. Um, when did you uh, figure out that you wanted to be a singer? Ah, what a I know exactly when that was. I was at a party in New York, and a true story. I was with uh, a guy named Teddy Neely, who was Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ Superstar, mm -hmm. and with his girlfriend named Kay Cole. Yeah. And we, I was doing hair on Broadway, and up until that point, I thought, you know, hey, this is fun, and I wonder what I'll do later on for, for, for my real life. And, um, and so I, I'm sitting at this party on the Upper West Side with Teddy Neely and Kay Cole, and they all of a sudden want to have a serious conversation with me, which is like, me. And uh, so they're going, you know, me, uh, have you ever thought about like really concentrating and putting everything into this? Because I think you could do something. And I, I'm going, nah. And, and, and so they get talking to me. And as they talk to me, I finally figured out, you know, Maybe I should do this. And so it was at that party that I actually decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do with my life. And it was right then and right there. Because I had done, uh, I'll tell you why. It was really based on a character in Hair uh, called General Grant, Ulysses S. Grant in Hair. And, he, and the scene in Hair was in the script timed out. To, this will give you an idea about why I do what I do. Timed out to be about one minute and 15 seconds long, okay? One night on Broadway, I did Ulysses S. Grant for 25 minutes. Wow. And, they, and they came back to me and they went, um, that was really funny, but the show was designed to be two and a half hours long and people get out at 10.30. We tonight got out at 10.55 because of your Ulysses S. Grant. I said, yeah, that's a problem. I said, it was funny. They said, well, uh, can you just cut it a little bit? So I went, okay. So from then on, I did about 13 minutes. <laughs> so that's why everything's so long. You see all the songs are long and everything I do is long. And you'll probably sit here till sometime tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and, uh, so that's, that's kind of who I am. I doubt it, but go ahead. You can certainly try. Before you got there, as a child or a youngster or, or whatever, what made you want to... Where, where did you find out you actually had a voice and you had a passion for it? Oh, my, I, I remember... How, how did you wait, wait a second. We were driving down. I was with my mother. <laughs> and I was over on the road that runs by Love Field. I don't remember what street that is. Mockingbird. Okay. And I'll take your word for it. So we, we pull up a, sta a, a traffic light. And and I'm singing along with Tennessee Ernie Ford at 16 times. And my mother turns to me and goes, thank God you're not going to grow up to be a singer because you can't carry a tune in a bucket. So there you go. It just never does. See, that's why people go, so tell me about singing. And I go, I'm not a singer. And, and because... You see, I know a lot of people that are singers, and a singer can just walk into a studio or walk on stage and just sing the song. Yeah. I can't do that. I have to build characters and scene studies, and I go through a whole thing. I have to be somebody else to be able to sing the song, and that and so what you know that's what it is. If I'm myself. I'm the guy, the little kid that's singing 16 tons, and if I'm not him, I'm somebody else, and that somebody else can actually sing. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> very talented. Thank you very much. As well as I'm also a closet stand-up comedian. Huh? Okay, go ahead. Which, which is your preference? Music? Acting? Comedy? <laughs> uh, so, no, I, I'm an actor. And that, that's really what I do. That's what I, because when I was in high school, that's how I actually found my voice as a human being, was through uh, doing the musicals. I, I started out, they made me do the music. I don't do musicals. And then the next year we did uh, Where's Charlie? And I had a small role and I kind of got into it. And the last, my senior year, 
we did a musical called Plain and Fancy, and I had one of the leads. I played a character called Ezra Weber, and Weber, and uh, Weber, Weber, I don't know, whatever his name is, and, and I did it again. I did it, I, I did it the same as Grant. I, I said to the young lady who was playing the lead, um, I had developed this whole thing in my bedroom at home with socks, and I had on like 12 pairs of socks, and I kept taking socks off, and I turned to her, never do this now, because, you know, you don't do this. If you can get your lines in, go ahead. And so, and, and so that, I guess I should have realized who I was at that moment, but I didn't. Okay, here we go. We got one. We got time for yours and two more. Okay. <laughs> During the filming of Rocky Horror Picture Show, and uh, and during yeah, I have a I have a brilliant memory of the filming of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Susan Sarandon in brawn panties. Okay. What is the mo what is my most favorite song I've ever sung? It is a song, the last song on Bad Out of Hell, and it is a song called For Crying Out Loud. It is the most believable, real love song ever written. Question. Uh, you, you want it so bad. Go ahead. Early in the film, uh, there was some a discussion with Phil. You expect me to remember that long ago? Yeah. <laughs> they wanted to do a little, get a little information on the old me, and you just want them to film the fresh me. Yeah, fresh meat. Can you talk about that conflict that you had early on? Oh, listen, uh, you see, they, they cut that. Because I was really... Because uh, when you see that, you go, well, he doesn't look like a very nice guy. <laughs> and and uh, I was really giving them a lecture in there. on Because I couldn't get in my dressing room, so I went in the laundry room. And... Uh, and because they had, uh, because I didn't think, it, I just finished doing an A&E biography. And they went back and they talked to Todd, and they talked to my daughter Pearl, and they talked to my daughter Amanda, and they talked to all these different people. And I said, look, I don't want to do another A&E biography. If we're going to do this, it's about right now. It's not about anything in the past. It's about from this moment forward. And Bruce kept going me all the whole time. Well, what's it about? Um, I don't know what it's about, Bruce. It'll it be what it's about. We'll just it'll happen. And he goes, well, what's it about? And I go, well, Bruce, I don't know what it's about. We'll figure it out. And Bruce did. And Bruce did a fantastic job. And put your hands together. It was freezing cold. We were in Canada. Oh God. And I I had said to the the managers, uh, do do don't whatever you do, do not book me in cold weather in the winter. Send me to Florida, send me to Australia, send me to Brazil. I don't care where you send me, don't send me. So they sent me to Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, <laughs> Montreal. Uh, it's, no, you, you see that picture of all that stuff? That's what it was like the whole time. Except in, in, in uh, um, on Vancouver Island. But uh, Bruce did a fantastic job, even though he had no clue what he was doing when it started. And, and I was going to give him a lecture. I'm 60 years old and I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay? <laughs>